So I've got everything staged here uh, to do an indoor melt, pour outside because it's lost foam, but thought I'd just show you how I got things staged here. So the shank and the molds already vibed and packed are sitting there by the overhead door uh, on little wheel dollies. Then here's my rig over here and I just fired it up so it's just a few minutes into the melt but uh, crucibles charged things are starting to come to temperature. Thought maybe I'd give everybody a walk through my rig since I haven't done that in a while and just went through revamping some of it. It's a eight and a half kilowatt two coil just resistive coil furnace glorified kiln if you will. I don't know if you can see those LEDs because of the glare or the strobe but the white panel meter on the top has got voltage, current, uh, power, and then energy consumed that it totals over the course of the melt. I didn't reset that here. Um, I set it for 1800 Fahrenheit. You can see there on the, on the PID, it's making its way up to that right now. Uh, the status lights there that are on indicate the coils are on. Hour meter is recording time. This uh, hour meter here is out to launch. It failed about 10 hours. I'll have to replace that. Um, outside that, pretty straightforward. This little thing parked next to it's actually the power supply and control for the actuator that's in the rig. And then you've probably seen my build a couple of times, but if not, it's just a counterbalanced mechanism here where I hang weight on the back to counterbalance the, the furnace. It's a block and tackle system, so this weight moves twice the distance that the furnace actually moves, but it only takes half the weight. And it moves on a track that's kind of a poor man's uh, V-guided system there. You can see I just tacked on some angle iron onto that, and then the V-wheels are spring-loaded, and that's what just keeps it from flopping around back there. But that's the ballast. and and counterweight so whatever furnace or combination of things I put on the other side I can just uh, put whatever counterweight is necessary on there to make it basically zero weight and then um, of course the, the furnace I'll come back to this in a minute um, those on homefoundry.org uh, they've probably been following their handful of this the, I revamped the um, my small furnace. This is one of two furnaces that fits on here, and this is my smaller one that will handle up to an A20. Um, these things hanging here, uh, some of the uh, tools that we'll use during the melt. Uh, I got a parometer, a uh, uh, metal contact parometer here, and this is my new degassing lance. It's going to be the maiden voyage for that. It's hanging on this uh, overhead crane. I actually put that crane there originally just to uh, lift furnace bodies on and off the uh, the lift. I've got another little actuator that I mount on it, but it's a pretty uh, handy thing to hang tools like that on and get them out of the way so you aren't tripping over them and they're right there handy when you need them. Uh, I've got my skimmer on there as well and you can put about anything on there that you want. You can see. And then back here, as far as the mechanism and how it works, it's got a couple of limit switches down here for low limit, another limit switch up here for high limit, and then this linear actuator provides the stroke on that, and it's directly connected to the furnace mount down there, which you can't see very well. But there's another block and uh, uh, tackle system here with these cables, and what that's for is, is there's actually weights uh, inside the shaft up here that is a separate counterbalance for the lid. So um, there's a couple of them in there and I can add uh, more weight if I have a heavier lid on the furnace. But what it does is, is uh, that's a separate lift mechanism for the lid and it basically makes the lid feel like it weighs nothing because of the counterweight. So we come over here just maybe to demonstrate that a little bit. Here's the lid. You just unlock it, lift it up, and you've got uh, access to the furnace there. As you can see, I've still got ingot cooking in there right now, so we haven't gone 
liquid yet, but uh, we're not far from it. And the uh, thing I didn't mention was is I got that cable routing system there that you see. That, uh, that works pretty good, so it, it handles the travel of the furnace. So as the furnace goes up, that, uh, that little top part of the electrical cable there is what takes up the, for the electrical connection on that. And then, of course, I just got the hard plumbing going down and uh, into it there. But uh, I didn't mention this thing here, but it's just a little multi-station uh, thermocouple switch. So if I want to instrument temperature at any other locations, I can put other thermocouples on there and switch back and forth between them and I've got this little uh, handheld um, uh, readout for my uh, K-type thermocouple and I also use that on the uh, pyrometer there when it's hooked up to get the reading so my furnace thermocouple control is, uh, uh, I don't have to disconnect that. So I'll move back and pan back here. Of course the whole thing's on wheels so in the summertime I just wheel the whole thing out the, the door there in, in the driveway. But uh, this time, just because it's uh, down around 5 degrees outside and pretty cold, we're going to melt it in here and then I'll just open the garage door and snatch the crucible and uh, take it outside and pour it. That's the walk around. <laughs>